that assist the deaf with access to information. Take a look. At just 20 years old and 22 years old, Elisa Vatia and Emmanuel Mulengwa are the developers of Visavis, -vis, a software that enables inclusion in communication for the deaf. Their inspiration came after having an experience interacting with a physically challenged person, which marked a turning point for their innovations. Visavis -vis is an assistive technology, mm. social enterprise. Okay. We are building uh, leading edge technologies mm. that uh, facilitate communication. Mm -hmm and uh, break the communication barrier between the deaf mm -hmm. and uh, the hearing communities. Early 2020, before the pandemic, uh, my co-founder and I, we used to train robotics around the country. And we had multiple instances where we interacted with deaf students. And to us, this was like an aha moment because it was a new experience and uh, the only option we had was to write on pen Paper. But then we started having multiple uh, occurrences similar to that. And uh, we just decided like, uh, like since we are into this and uh, we have identified this gap, let's use our skills, uh, talk to the deaf community, understand their problems and see how we can use our skills to alleviate this. With background in ICT and data science, they put together vis-a-vis. And this is how it works. Vis-a-vis, -vis, say like uh, it's an AI platform okay. that can be used to translate sign language into text and also text into sign language with no need of the hearing, understanding sign language. So how it's actually working is that um, we have like the backend of the application, which uh, this, this backend is the machine learning part. We're leveraging on machine learning, specifically computer vision. So we are trying to use what computers can see like the cameras of your phone or the webcam can see and then we are trying now to like uh if a deaf person is is uh, signing a deaf person is signing so this um these um frames it can be able to be captured and then it can be able to translate what exactly is being signed in text my personal experience. Scovia is one person living with hearing disability that has been able to benefit from the duo's innovation. With no ability to hear, she finds it easy interacting with the animations and office assistants in the software to access necessary information. I have communication skills when using the app. I have also gained some ICT skills by using the app. For example, how to start internet. If many people communicate with someone who doesn't know sign language, it is possible they use the chat room of this app. Achieving all this wasn't easy. For example, loading the data on that platform was a nightmare, as they had to use multiple sources of information, at least to get the minimum viable product right. One of the challenges we are facing is like the background really matters sometimes. And also like uh, when we started, the kind of data we were actually collecting were actually ourselves, just our hands doing like the science and all. So now after, after training it, we came to discover that um, that model cannot detect any other person's hand or the fingers. It detects ours more accurately than the other person's. So it means that um, during this uh, training, we have to collect data from different people, like that, and then it has to have different backgrounds. Kenya has a unique market with different ethnical divisions. And so, is there a need to use vernacular content? One of the interesting things is that deaf people know English. They don't know Kiswahili. Really? The first language they know is English. English uh, yes, because language yes, okay. because also Kenyan sign language mm. is actually originating from American sign language. Mm. Yeah, so basically everything, even in school or or even like the science itself, it's actually like in English. People living with disabilities are rarely consulted when innovations are being developed to support them. 
This is one of the concerns that the duo met while coming up with the application. The most repeated uh, phrase we had from our interactions was communication barrier. Communication barrier. And uh, through communication, uh, we learned that they can't access even basic services from healthcare, education, uh, financial services. Yeah, and uh, aside from that, we also learned that uh, it's expensive in terms of uh, for them, especially sign language interpretation services. Yeah, interestingly, to hire an interpreter to interpret for you, it's 2,500 shillings per hour, and that's like the average rate. But even with that, the market has been receptive. We've been uh, testing, iterating, and improving our technology with the deaf community. So far, we've involved 55 plus, which is our community, actually. They own the solution. According to the United Nations, about 15% of world population lives with disabilities. Yet, with the ground already uneven for them, somehow they have to make it around. With the support from Innovate Now, Eli and Mulengwa are championing a better world for PWDs through social innovation. We've been taking part in uh, Innovate Now Assistive Technology Accelerator, which is the first uh, assistive tech incubator in Africa. We have been having a conversation and actually meeting with the um, uh, National Council of People with uh, Disabilities. Mm. And C P W D and they're actually so excited about this. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they're actually waiting for it. They're <laughs> waiting for it. For the innovator, this week on KTN News, I'm Brian George Otieno.